Thank you. 
puedes volver atrás porque la vida ya te empuja como un aullido interminable this evening has had like a perfect sitting space for when they finish. Yeah. It's really odd. Um, yeah, um, discussion, open. Um, I have some stuff to say. Um, uh, I actually took loads of notes. Um, I felt like, oh, I, I felt so much from that. Um, I felt like you spoke for lots of people's journeys through, through life. Uh, because you weren't a motive, and somehow it, even though I could tell it was personal, it was still objective, and and therefore it made me feel like you were sort of speaking for everybody. And and these and these lines you were drawing, these bands, bracelets, and I was thinking about bands, and they cause kind of restriction and constriction, and um, and it made me think about experiences through life um, often they, they can they can restrict you uh, as you kind of um, say if you get burnt by a situation then you kind of learn to move you know navigate in a kind of smaller way the next time or something so it can be it can be constrictive but it but it's not a negative thing um, and it made me think of bra bracelets as well and how they're so noisy. I don't know, there lots of things were coming to mind about it. Um, and there was, there was one bit in it um, where there was the crying and the, and the humming and I um, found that really haunting and the shushing as well. Um, it felt quite oppressive and um, the, the crying and the humming, they felt disconnected to each other. Um, <coughs> and I don't quite know how to explain what it made me feel or think, but I, I found it haunting. And that's, yeah, it was really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I actually really enjoyed this kind of, in a way, simplicity of composition, but like, you know, there were like circles. So it's like, you start with a circle, you cover yourself with a circle, so that sound goes in circles as well because like you know you there is like certain repetition and i really like that like you know focus on one thing and then like how you can interpret that one thing in many different ways because it's like no a symbol of circle is it something restrictive or is it the infinity of our lives is it mm. you know so it's kind of by stripping it down you really add more layers and for the viewers to <coughs> like a space for interpretation I really enjoyed that. Mm. 
the ending seemed quite violent to me. I hadn't read the circles as um, a severing until you drew the paintbrush across your neck, and that seemed very evocative to me. Of, of it's clearly severing an artery or whatever. Um, and then it occurred to me that you sort of turned yourself into a, like an advent candle, almost, marking it. Uh, <laughs> you know, time, that way, especially with property. <coughs> So it seemed like the story of the life. Hey. Um, <coughs> thanks, Isabella. I really, um, I really enjoyed like how intensely it felt like you were engaging with each kind of segment that you were part of, and like although you remained <coughs> a kind of single entity in each, it, it felt like you. I don't know quite how to say it. it, felt like you cared about like the sequence as you were moving through it and like you cared as, in like subtly different ways for each moment <coughs> from like the moment of kind of half enjoying it sex to like the moment of like sh like shushing. They were like, I don't know, I felt really, I just like felt like this intense, quite like you were like retained an intensity of emotional commitment to like the segments that you were creating, I thought that was really, I, I really enjoyed that. I like the, the free <coughs> flow of the paint, how it's not, there's no friction in time mm. at all. Mm. Mm. The, um, the imagery reminds me of chattels and um, prison uniforms, and yeah. it's almost like a life you have. Ask a question. Can you just translate what you said at the end? I've got some of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, like the whole piece is based on a on a poem by Kulti Solo, and it's called Nevertheless <coughs> Hope. How do you think it's How? And um, so at the end, I say, you can't go back. Um, life pushes you like like a never ending howl. Did you say how? How? H-O-W, like oh. how, how do I do this sort of thing. Oh, right. Oh, cool. Now, I had how in my head, which made it quite abstract. <laughs> Especially when you do the wrists and the mm. ankles as well. It's, it's, yeah. Especially when you did the ankles and you put your two feet ankles together in the second one. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, the, I think the neck one was really poignant. I kind of, I kind of wanted you to slow down a bit uh, and make that more central, but also more like a <coughs> um, violent. I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> I don't know what you think about. But yeah, I really like the whole thing. Hey, I like a lot of um, black circle. It's like um, a game to stop people mm -hmm. to express something. It's like um, we will feel something from our hearts. But every circle is like stop you again and again. You're trying to express some, express something, but stop. And you, um, mm -hmm. the next one is the final one. It's like uh, we have <coughs> for me. It's like you have no chance. You can only rely on language. You can only to express yourself, but finally, it's still stopping you there. Mm -hmm. And you have to overcome the, the, the huge circle that you can get the mic to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's like overcome the comfort zone or something. Mm -hmm. I know, it's kind of interesting. There's also another aspect of the circle, which is this like ritualistic space of protection. Mm -hmm. And when you use that kind of like refrain of like your mother, well, I don't know, um, but like, it made me think that, like this because you repeated it, it was like you're just harking back to this time when you were allowed to be vulnerable. And when the, you spoke when the man is kind of crying and he's on what it's like 
this, uh, this kind of external force, like wanting to be vulnerable and you have to be that person for him. And it's like when you kept kind of coming back to your own body, it was like I'm mistaking it this place in the world for me to kind of my own personal protection. It's like there's a lot of flexibility in that symbol. Yeah. The whole thing did remind me of, I can't never, I can never please pronounce her name properly, but Guru <coughs> Gotari, uh, Thousand Plateaus, and they've got a chapter called The Refrain. And it just reminded me of that, how uh, creating that space for yourself and coming back to that space and, yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Did you want to say something? No, it's your hand. Hey, yes, question. I really like that you, there was kind of like two scenes that were like, the on the paper and then you would come out and you would speak, as opposed to just standing up and like you had to step out of the circle and then, um, yeah, I just like that there was like the two, the two acts, and like you said before, like taking the time to like do everything. Like even when you went back into the circle, you like took a break, and then you picked up the. It, you weren't really like rushing, rushing. Like everything had its own like, time to um, be done. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to give time, especially because it's kind of about time as well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. help people reflect a bit more. To give it a bit of space. Yeah, I really like this place. Why did you take the decision of like stepping out of the circle? Why it wasn't performed within the circle? Was it a conscious decision or? Um, yeah, um, I think what she was saying is, is spot on. <laughs> so it it was it is kind of like the comfort zone of yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, there was some, I like, there's so many of the comments, so yeah, just agree with the entire, and I think it was such a kind of, yeah, wonderful performance to watch, but there was, if 